Hello, this is Professor Whitman, and I wanted to start off your week three with a brief little lesson on strategic planning and how that fits into the whole marketing picture that we are studying this semester. So let's go ahead and get started. So you may be reading the words of the value proposition. What is a value proposition? You can think of it as an elevator speech that um, basically the benefits of whatever it is, the product or you know, offering, service offering that you have. Um, people often talk about having value propositions, 30 second elevator speech, the elevator pitch for themselves. You know, the idea is when you are, say you get in an elevator and you're with the CEO and you have until the top floor of the building to make your pitch to sell yourself, what will that be? So that's your elevator pitch. That's kind of the same thing, but for products. So you want to think about those, those things that make your product unique and how you can market that to uh, your, your customers. So a good value proposition is memorable, um, tangible, easy to understand, and it solves something for people. Um, we'll sh I'll show you a couple of value propositions on the next couple of slides that do this. And it should differentiate your company as much as possible. This is tricky because it's supposed to be, you know, very brief in nature. So you don't have, you know, a half an hour to explain why your product is different. So you've got to really be succinct. And this is where copywriters and folks like that can be a big help. So this is for Uber. And you can see there's two different value propositions here. One on the top, always the ride you want. That is geared towards passengers. The one on the bottom, get in the driver's seat and get paid. They're both very clear and they both have two entirely different target audiences. And sometimes value propositions, it's the same product can have those different value propositions. And I think Uber is a great example of that, that um, certain demographics, certain target markets may use a product for a certain reason, while others may use it for an entirely different reason. And you're gonna wanna approach it, um, your value proposition for those two unique audiences. And that's what Uber has done here. Why do these work? Um, it's, it's discussing the pain point for passengers. Um, they want to travel stress-free. They want it to be convenient and always the ride you want. So you're, you're always going to get where you need to go when you, you need to get there. Um, the second value proposition, get paid. It's telling you that, you know, you work for us, you're, you're going to see returns. Um, largest network of active riders is another point to sell to potential drivers to let them know they will always have customers. So they're always going to be making money. So that's why the Uber value propositions both work. So this is a value proposition for Slack. Uh, make work life simpler, more pleasant, and more productive. So this is really important because Slack is geared towards remote teams or people who work maybe in a humongous office and they might not see each other face to face all the time, mostly more for a remote environment in these days. So the, the pain points for managers with remote workers, you hear this all the time, they feel like we need FaceTime, that you don't build camaraderie if we're not seeing each other by the water cooler. They think people are goofing off and they're not as productive when in fact research indicates people actually are more productive when they work from home. But Slack is addressing all of those points for managers who may be a little leery of remote work. What Slack is promising here is to make sure that people can easily do their work and it's, it's more fun. You can build those relationships and they will continue to be productive or perhaps even more productive. So you can tell that this value proposition is really geared more towards the managers, the people who would be purchasing Slack for their organization. So it's a very effective uh, value proposition here. So again, I kind of talked about some of this stuff. Uh, again, the, the virtual office, the remote work thing, it continues to be um, a burr in some managers' sides uh, because again, there's this stereotype that um, People are not productive and they're slacking off. Ha, no pun intended with the name Slack. But it's it's showing you how that this, this tool can help them avoid all those pitfalls. And so if you were a manager kind of on the fence about going to remote work, Slack, having a Slack tool in place might, might sell you on it. So again, that's why it is a good value proposition. So another thing that you have to do in the strategic planning process, we're going to pivot away from... Um, 
the value proposition is you have to have to, to have the strategic plan, which is kind of your big vision for where you're going to go with your product offering and your marketing and, and even the company at large, you have to evaluate a bunch of different elements. Um, we often talk about developing mission statements, uh, vision statements, that kind of thing for a company. And it's easy to want to start there when you have a business idea. And that's can be a starting point, but you really do need to have all of this planning behind it before you come up with that mission and vision, and finally that value proposition. So what you have to do is evaluate your external environment and your internal environment. So external environment is literally everything is external to the company. It's the economy, it could be the, the local workforce, competition, um, you know, anything going on in the political legal sphere. Um, internal, again, it could be the internal workforce. Um, all of those things, technology that the company has. Um, an external uh, environment influence could be emerging technologies too. So these are all these different things that you have to factor in when you're looking at strategic planning. So you're looking inward and outward. Once you have a good handle on that, you can come up with your mission statement and objectives based on that strategic, you know, kind of evaluation and come up with that value proposition and strategy. Oops, I just clicked on myself. So I'm going to click to the next slide now. So conducting a situation analysis to really understand everything, you it's a lot of work. We talk about SWOT analysis, and I have a slide coming up about that. So again, we talked about those internal and external inputs that you have to evaluate. And it's not just a cursory look. You really have to delve into this. Um, there's big factors, little factors, all of these things. Um, sometimes situation analyses, you know, you can't predict things. Like nobody predicted the COVID-19 pandemic. However, some companies did have, you know, incidents like, well, what if we had to um, shut down operations? And they would kind of plan for that as a, an emergency thing as part of their situation analysis. And that came into good play with, with the COVID-19 pandemic. They were able to, to adapt pretty quickly. Um, so these are all of the things you need to think about when you're thinking about that situation analysis. A good way to look at it is a SWOT analysis, as I just said. SWOT, if you're not familiar with it, just means strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. So, you know, the strengths of the company, 